Hi everybody, it's Chris. Welcome to my channel, Craft and Chris, the channel where I like to talk about cross stitch and maybe a little bit of sewing and occasionally another odd craft that I'm working on or that I've completed in the past, but mostly it's about cross stitching. So I have a few things to show you today, so let's jump right in. I'm going to start with some of the things that I've been working on since I last spoke to you. Um, one of the first ones that I was working on was Winter Squirrel by the Blue Flower. There's a series of these squirrels now. There's a spring one and an autumn one and there's a Halloween one now. Um, I'm not sure if there's going to be more in the future, but this is the one that I am working on right now. And this is where I am at. Pardon the loose threads. But I've completed the entire squirrel. And then I've started some work on the wagon that's going to contain his little Christmas tree with his acorn decorations and his acorn presents. So lots of fun. So that's a fun one to work on. Next thing I worked on was my Mill Hill kit, this button and beads kit. This one is called Winter Woods. This is the second one of these button and beads ones that I've done. I really like them. Uh, my hope is maybe, because I like, I like series and seasonal things, is maybe to try and have one of these for each season or some of the holidays that I can sort of switch in and out of the frames, which I'll show you in just a minute. So here it is stitched up with the beads on it. So the birch trees are a little bit easier to see, I think, from a distance than close up. But I wanted you to see the beads. There's only two different beads on this one, the white ones and the clear ones. So it wasn't too complicated as far as the beading went compared to the other one that I did, which I'll show you in just a minute. So this one would be like a winter one because they obviously have a lot of Christmas ones. So uh, but this would be one I could have up like for January. I think there's even a really nice heart Valentine type one that you could do for February. So I, uh, I just went to Michael's and got this little sorry, shadow box frame and these fit perfectly in here. So you just pop the back off and you can see, if I can show you, I'm not very coordinated. You can see it literally just sits. Hey, Dad. Literally just sits in there like that. And you can put the back on it. This fits on like that. And you have this cool little shadow box frame. So Michael just makes them in white and black, which I think will work for me, but I imagine you could easily paint them if that was something you wanted to do. So this was the other one that I completed. I think this one was called Moonstruck. It's like a Halloween one. There's a cat on a branch. A little bird button up there. This one was really fun. I really liked the colors in this one. And this one had a lot of different beads, but that made it kind of a little bit more fun for me. So... So that, that one's more a Halloween one than a fall one, but I kind of put it out for fall into the end of October anyway. So that was a project that I'd started that, the Winter Woods, back in, um, when I was at StitchCon in June. And I kind of just worked on it periodically between now and then, but over Christmas I thought it was a nice one I'd like to try and finish, and I did. That was good. Um, another one that I picked back up again was this Lizzie Kate's Four Seasons. This one is Summer. And I've changed a few of these colors a little bit. I'm not a big fan of this really pale green. I changed that. And the windows, I didn't mind the white so much. 
but trying to put these mullions in these windows are three stitches across so that one going up and down you had to put in the middle of the middle stitch and that's really hard to do and make it look straight so I ended up doing this which I'm undecided about. Feel free to chime in. I think I like it. It certainly brings a little bit more of the gray in. Like that rooster is actually more a gray than a black. That's the color around the door. My other thought was not to do the mullions and just like outline the white windows instead. And so yeah, I used a, a darker green for my grass. I actually made a mistake on the goose here. I think I put an extra stitch somewhere which made his neck stick out a little bit more. But I kind of like that because I don't know if you've ever had any encounters with geese. But I've had some kind of chase me and that's what they do. So, so anyway, so that is summer finished. So that's the second one I've completed in this series. This was the first one that I did. This is autumn. So I still have spring and winter to do and again I kind of have a plan for I think what I'd like to try and do with these finishes but I'll keep you posted on that. The other one that I worked on recently is this Dimensions Gold Collection the North Wind Stocking. This is a fairly old pattern I think from the 90s 1999. And I'm stitching this as a stocking for my husband. And this is where I'm at for that. Yes, my husband's name is Bev, short for Beverly. It's a common name for men in this area where I live. I grew up with and went to school with at least three different Beverlys or Bev's. And again, pardon all the parked threads, but there's a lot going on with that background, so it's just easier to park the threads rather than try and jump around and get lost. I've just started Santa, so that was kind of fun. I've backstitched on the owl. I haven't done any backstitching on Santa's head yet, but I don't know if you can see the... There's some uh, Krynik in the white of his hat to make it sparkly. So yes, yeah, so I'm going to just kind of work my way down from the top, down to all the fun animals because, let's face it, I have a thing for critters. And then the last thing that I worked on and almost done, I was trying to, I stayed up kind of late last night, I was trying to finish so I could show it to you finished today, but not quite, but I'm almost there, is this Madame Chantilly Gifts. For Santa. This is really fun. I also bought this, um, I purchased this when I was at StitchCon last summer at Keepsakes and it was one of my starch for the Christmas in July sale that I was, was part of. See if you can figure out what I haven't completed yet. So here it is. <laughs> And this is on, I apologize, I'm very bad at telling you what fabric I'm doing stuff on, but this is on 32 count Picture This Plus Legacy, and I really, really like this linen. And this is just really fun to stitch, especially after working on that dimension stocking where some of it's half stitches, some of it's crosses, some of it's two threads, some of it's three threads, one thread. It's just really nice to do these solid blocks of color. And I, I think too, I just really, really like the colors in this. So, so yeah, I left the little girl with the red skirt to last. She was my favorite. I just like the color combo. Um, so I just have to finish the little plant that she's holding. And then of course her, her head. And then I'll be done. And then I have to see, I have a frame. 
already that I'm not sure if this will fit in. I'll have to double check. Otherwise, I'll have to see what I'm going to do. So that's kind of all the stitching I've been working on since I last saw you. Um, I do plan to finish um, the gifts for Santa and then um, spin my little wheel and see what I'm going to work on next. So the next thing I think I'll show you is I got some stitchy stuff in the mail recently. Um, my daughters and I decided for Christmas that it might be kind of fun to give each other subscription boxes. All three of us have kind of been interested in that and thought it would be fun to try it to see what it's like. Um, so that, that seemed like a, a fun thing to do rather than just, you know, buying other stuff we would give that as a gift to each other so we could all have a little bit of, bit of fun trying it my both my daughters decided to do um, Japanese treat boxes so with like candies and cookies and stuff like that from Japan so they've both been having fun with that and um, I of course decided to go with a cross stitch subscription and um, thank you to my friend Gail from Australia hi Gail um, she introduced me to Cotton and Twine, which is a company out of um, the UK. And the thing that I really like about their subscription boxes is they send you a pattern, but they send you everything to complete it. So not just the fabric and the flosses, but the backing fabric, the trims, the padding, the double-sided sticky tape. Let me just show you. And then, of course, there's always other little fun things in there. So um, I'm actually going backwards. This this one, I, had, I did two boxes that sort of fit within what we decided we would budget for each other, as I think we all did about two months. My one daughter, I think, got three months with hers. But um, So I got one kind of before Christmas, which I didn't open until Christmas Day, and then I got a second one just after Christmas, I think. So, so this was the second one. Um, so one of the cute little things that was in there was this little change purse, notions pouch, whatever you would like to use it for with this cute little penguin on this adorable polka dot um, canvasy sort of fabric that says money for drinky poos and sorry dancing shoes. I can't read script backwards very well. So, so that's really cute with a little zipper on the top, just a black lining. Um, and then there's usually, so there's usually like a little non-cross stitch item and then usually a treat of some sort. So this one had this really nice package of almost like handmade sugar cookies. They're really pretty and really good. So they're, they're gone. Sorry. Um, and then usually there's, this one had like a coffee. So it was just a little sort of package of, um, like an instant coffee that again is, is gone. I don't drink coffee, but I gifted it to a friend of mine. So, so in this one here is the pattern. So this cute little winter house. Oh, there's the cookies you can see right there. They're very tasty. And so everything is in here. So, uh, so the pattern and then there's the, all the flosses that you need and there's a needle there. Here's the fabric. An Ada, kind of like a khaki colored Ada, double sided sticky tape. Um, this is some matte board. This is some um, fabric that you're going to back your pattern with. So that's the fabric there. And then they even give you the, the canvas. So the whole thing is mounted on a canvas. And then of course these are all the instructions for stitching and finishing and yeah everything comes like in these cute little little bags with love all your little uh bits and bobs and stuff are in there so that was what they were calling the december one so lots of fun and it's kind of nice now because i have a project technically all kitted up that i can start whenever I want, which is a real bonus for me because I don't have a local needlework shop. I do have a Michael's so I can get DMC, but I can't really get, or I can get 
standard fabrics like Monocle and Ada and a plain linen. So yeah, so that's kind of nice. So the first one that I had got, so again, another one comes in these cute little boxes. And the shipping was fast, like really fast. I was impressed, very impressed. So this one came with um, a really cute little robin ornament, a little stuffed robin. He was on like a clothespin, so you could just clip him on your tree. I apologize, he's been packed away with the Christmas stuff, so I don't have him to show you. But Gail just showed him in a video not that long ago, if you want to watch one of hers, and I'll, um, I'll link her down below. Uh, you can see what the little robin looked like. And then this one also had some uh, little box of chocolate snowmen, so they're long gone. And a little packet of tea. And yeah, my cat's getting in here. She's getting curious. So. so this is the design. This is the November design. And I just love this one. All these fun little trees and pots. And then the little birds with the Santa hats on their heads. It's just too adorable. I can't wait to stitch this one. And again, everything comes in these cute little bags. These are actually some um, charms. Some cute little antique type silvery charms. So those are really sweet. <laughs> Santa Claus is coming to town. So if anybody has been thinking about doing a, uh, a subscription box for cross stitch, I'd, I'd recommend them for sure. Um, another cute little bag. With little birds on it. And yeah. Floss, double sided sticky tape, rick rack. My cat's trying to chew on the box. Um, the padding. And that board. Here's this fun pattern Ada to stitch it on. And then some really nice felt the back so that's fun so those were kind of my Christmas gifts from my family and then I got one more fun stitchy thing in the mail this came from my um, my friend Nicole Buckeye Stitcher hi Nicole um, that she had sent to me as a little Christmas goodie bag so there's this really adorable card that she made. How cool is that? That little Eskimo has popped up. Just got some embossing. Lots of fun. And then she sent, sent these Christmassy flosses with Christmassy names. So that's Snowfall. Jolly Holly. Holly Berry and Balsam Fur. How cool is that? That was so fun. And then she also sent me two adorable patterns. She knows I'm a little bit of a series addict. And she also, I think, had known I'd been looking at these in the past. So she sent me this heart in hand stitching bird. And Christmas bird and there's a bunch of these birds I think for different holidays and stuff so that'll be a new series that I'll be starting to collect and work away at so these are done with hand dyed flosses and I think I'd really like to do them in the called for flosses so I'm gonna have to put an order in online to get those before I can start them but I look forward to getting those started so that was like a real surprise and a wonderful treat so thank you very much Nicole I appreciate it very much Oh, and it even came, I love this tissue paper it came in, which is so pretty. I don't know if you can see, there's little gold sparkly things in there, too. That was pretty. So that was all my fun, stitchy stuff that came in the mail. And that's it. I didn't purchase anything in the last little while, obviously, with Christmas coming and stuff. So, so the last couple things I just wanted to show you, that's mostly the cross-stitching stuff. So if you're not interested in sewing stuff or a quick shop update about my Etsy shop, then um, I will see you later. 
Uh, but if you are interested, I was just going to show you a couple of new bags that I've made and put up in my Etsy shop, Craft and Chris Creations. I'll put a link down below. And, um, and then I have a new item that I have made that I'll show you as well. But let's start with the bags. So the first one that I made, for all you coffee lovers, is a coffee bag with all these words to do with coffee. It's got kind of like the creamy lining fabric. And the other one, this is my attempt at a Halloween bag. I didn't want to go literal with all hearts and stuff, but I thought this fabric just sort of hinted at Valentine's with the pinks and all those sweet colors and those owls are adorable. So, so that is the other one. And then the new item that I've made is someone had suggested this to me at uh, when I was at the Stitch Inn, the Hamilton Stitch Inn last November, that I should maybe make some magnifier covers because it's right there's always you always hear always hear these horror stories of people who you know have smoking fabric or holes in their couch or heaven forbid a fire starting because of direct sunlight passing through the magnifier part. Um, of your magnifying light. So the best way to deal with that is to have a little cover to pop over it. So that is what I have decided to make. Um, I will show you quickly. This is my prototype that I made for myself. Um, it, this is for my um, portable light that I had showed you in another video. And I've also made a bigger one for my floor uh, magnifier. So this one fits on um, like this this head's about six by six and that that's like to the edges obviously not the, the lens itself and so they basically just open up like that so you can slide them over and they're actually reversible so you can pick which you want to look at or if you get tired of looking at one after a while you can switch around the other way the other fun thing is that they are just it is just a drawstring pouch pattern so if you don't have a magnifier but you like the fabrics you can buy it as a drawstring pouch and then I put these little toggles on them so that you can just tighten them right up again. You know me and horses, so I love this horse fabric. So it just slides right over there. Then I just need to. And I just have to be careful because my cat likes to eat this, so I just tend to tuck it into the little bag there. So the one in the shop is made out of the same owl fabric with the blue fabric inside with the little blue toggle. And then the larger one, so this one fits on the head of a magnifier that's approximately 8 by 10. Again, that's the outside dimensions, not the lens dimensions. And then you get a little extra inch with the casing up here. Um, now, if somebody has a lamp that the head is bigger or an odd size, I am quite willing to like make one to fit your lamp specifically. So don't hesitate to call me if that's something that you're interested in. But, but the, these are the only two I have up right now. I am going to make more in the next couple of weeks, but I just wanted to get a couple made to see how it worked and get the pricing figured out as far as um, shipping and all that stuff kind of goes. So these I can ship fairly cheaply because um, I can ship them as a letter because they're thin and they don't need a ton of padding like the bags or they're not thick like the zipper pouches because those things are thicker. Like it has to be less than an eighth of an inch to be sent as a letter or it has to fit through this certain slot of this plastic thing they have at the post office which the bags even though the bags are flat they won't fit through the slot because they're just a little bit too too long sort of thing so um, if I folded them they might fit through there but I'm reluctant to do that because I worry it's going to damage the vinyl or you're going to be left with a permanent crease in your vinyl 
but uh, but yeah so uh, yeah if you're interested in those check them out if you have questions about them or if you do have a an odd size lamp that you want to cover for let me know um, so yeah so the last thing I sometimes like to share something that I've made in the past so I thought it would be really fun to share with you uh, a blanket that I had made and I apologize there's probably some cat hair on this but yeah, I'm gonna show you anyway so many many years ago um, there was a show on public television I think called sewing with Nancy maybe and she had shown this project and I thought that would be a really cool idea to make for my daughters who were quite little at the time. So basically you're making them a blanket. So here's this one. And all you need is a panel, well, you know, as big as you want it, of fabric and then some polar fleece that coordinates with it so i have some blue polar fleece in here and the the ideal is to have what she had suggested is to have a pattern that has lines in it so you can see this has these blocks of fish and starfish and stuff it's really fun my daughter really liked the fishy crackers so i thought this these little blue fish reminded me of the fishy crackers so basically all you do is lay the fabric on the polar fleece and I think I use safety pins, so you just pin it everywhere so it doesn't shift too much. And then you just show, sew straight lines down the lines of the, the cotton fabric. And then to finish the edges, you just fold the polar fleece over. And again, my sewing wasn't the greatest, but you fold the polar fleece over and just sew along the edge. And because it doesn't unravel, you don't even really have to roll it under which now I, I would maybe do that because I'm kind of doing that with the bags but it's quite simple if you're not a really experienced sewer and yeah like my kids have used these for years they've been washed hundreds of times they're a nice little like lap blanket to throw on you know when you're sitting and watching tv type of thing um so yeah it, it was a really fun easy project um you know, you can customize them to fabrics that, that you know, your family member likes. And, uh, you know, it's just a homey, comforting item. My, kid, my kids have loved them for years. My oldest daughter still uses hers quite a bit. So. so that's everything I have to share with you today. Thank you again for taking time out of your day to um, come and hang out with me and see what I've been up, up to. And um, until next time, see you later. Bye.